Dallas, Texas, and the Texas State Fair. And for the better part of a century, the Sooners and Longhorns have defined conferences, national titles, and how regions of the country are perceived based on the outcome of this game. When these two meet, everybody pays attention. This matchup today, part of the lifeblood of the sport, a rivalry game where the results will be remembered for a lifetime. As we'll see, the number three team in the country, the Texas Longhorns, taking on the 14th ranked team in the land, the Oklahoma Sooners. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth, as always, by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Guys, let's tee this one up. And the Longhorns will kick it away to start us off. On the move from inside is five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. So Oklahoma's offense will get the first swing of the game. Guys, this rivalry's a throwback. Aren't many left like this where the stadium's divided right down the middle. So much tremendous history between these two teams. And David, it just always seems in this game, you throw out the stats, you throw out the standings, you throw out the records, and this is just a different energy when we see these teams play. It's because you bring in the hatred. They don't like each other. The fan bases don't like each other. Texas, Oklahoma, it always means a lot. There's a lot of different ways this offense can attack you throwing the ball. One of them is getting the running back going, and the screen is a great way to get him lathered up and get the defense starting to think about him a little bit more now. Motion by the back forces the defense to adjust. He lost one down the sideline, and he bats it away and falls incomplete. Can't help but think back to last year, Jesse, when Oklahoma figured out a way to win that close game. And Reese, Texas has been reminded every day this past year about losing that game close, too. So you knew, David, coming out in this one, they were going to be amped up and ready to roll. And you know the juices are flowing early in the game. Like, this is not a friendly rivalry. OU doesn't like Texas. Texas doesn't like OU. Man, this is a defense that prides themselves on stopping the run, and that is a huge statement on their opponent's opening drive of the game. Third and short, they don't just get a stop. They get a tackle for loss. That sends a very clear message that they're going to be the more physical side today. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He'll settle for some pretty good field position and make the fair catch at around the 35. So Texas's offense will take the field for the first time. Typically, the last thing a defense wants is to have a backer on a wide receiver, but we may see some of that today, guys. Typically, you don't see linebackers that can run like this guy, and that's why they feel okay letting him cover this dynamic wide receiver one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and, and feel okay, it's not going to be a good thing. You better get your hands on him early. Put your physicality, let that win. It ain't going to be your speed. That completion leaves us with second and medium. They'll move the running back to try to force the defense to adjust. Zings it complete to the right. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. They pick up the first down on the drag route. I know that seems like a simple route, but it's actually a lot more complex than what it looks like because that route changes based on whether it's man or zone. If it's man coverage, he's flying across the field. If it's zone, he's got to sit down over the ball in a soft spot, giving his quarterback a place to go with it. Nice job of those guys being on the same page there. And they'll stop him after a minimal pickup. Play this game in the shadow of Big Tech. You can get a corny dog out there, play carnival games, and see one of the great rivalries in the sport, David. It's crazy. You literally walk outside of the stadium, and there are thousands upon thousands of people. They don't even realize a football game's going on, Jesse. They're just having a good time. You're right. It's, it's part of what makes this game so special. The Red River rivalry is just so much fanfare. There's so much tradition. And remember, with bragging rights on the line, this thing just means more. And just a great job by the defense being stout, right? That's your job. Be stout up front, stuff in the run play, 
make them get in more passing situations, but do not let them run the football. That's one-on-one. -on -one. Stop the run first. On third and long, trying to have a big completion here. Caught over the middle. It's golden. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. Third down, a lot of times it comes down to not necessarily who's the most open, who do you trust the most? No, it's not about the X's and the O's. It's about the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And when my guy's better than you and I get you matched up out wide and I know I trust you, I'm finding you. Out of the gun, the give to the back. Knocked down after a gain of one to the 27. Run game is good. Balance is good. Now listen, if the run game isn't good, then you got to pass the football a little bit more. But sometimes you got to keep them honest, take them chunk by chunk. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Wide receiver shows motion. Grabbed behind the line. It's Bond. And that defense pushing him out of bounds after a short game. Ball's at the 22. Third and short coming. Can the defense force him to settle for a field goal? Looking to throw. It's Ewers. A little screen to the running back. Good tackle there to stop him short of the first down. It'll bring up a big decision. They allowed the completion, but this defense was swarming to keep him away from that first down line. Yeah, and you allow completions in those third down situations underneath the sticks, and you come up and rally, and everybody flies to the football. That's great execution by this defense. Here we go with the run on fourth down. Oh, what a caught! The stop is made, but this offense is threatening first and goal from the nine. I think throughout the week in practice, when they were game planning their opening script, I don't even know if they envisioned it going as well as it has. This has been beautiful. Nice balance, really nice rhythm. It feels like everything they're dialing up here on their first drive of the game is working to perfection. Motion from the offense. Wants to go up top. They're bringing heat. And the pressure gets there. And down he goes at the 18. I think defenses sometimes get frustrated and you want to get blitz happy and because you give up yards. In this day and age, you're going to give up yards. Who cares? This is the area we've got to bow up. Nice job on first down stopping them. A couple more downs here to stay aggressive. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. They'll run play action. And it'll be incomplete. This defense is physical in pass deep. And the big tight end, a lot of times that's a bigger strike zone, a bigger dude. And you could tell they put the hit on him. And that ball came out and it came to the turf. Nice job playing physical by this defense. It's still third and goal. Looking for a man. It's Ewers. Getting some heat. Rush coming in hot, and they got him at the 29. Man, that's just kind of frustrating for an offense. You move the ball all the way down the field. You got an opportunity on third down, and you can't protect your quarterback. You get the sack, and now it's probably field goal time if you make a field goal. It's wise not to be too greedy, and they'll go ahead and send out the field goal unit. This is going to be a 46-yard field goal attempt. Splits the uprights. Good. And that'll put the first points of the game on the board. It's 3 to nothing.
So after the made field goal, they'll kick it away and rely on their defense. He'll return it. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. Here comes the Sooner offense back onto the field. On the move, it's all Chuck. Not a lot of room there. Give him a couple to the 16. The Sooners will hustle to the line. Scanning the field, it's Arnold. He's got his man. Oh, there might have been trouble if they had knocked him down so quickly. Really nice job by the quarterback understanding I needed to throw this ball hard. Like, I got to fit in there tight. And a nice job by the wide receiver wearing it because he really didn't have a choice because he was going to wear that one regardless. Looking to push the pace with the no huddle. On third and short, they'll try to throw for it. Unloads to the wideout. Catch in the middle. It's Burks. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. The Sooners have it with a first and ten. He'll keep it himself. And he'll pick up one. It brings up second and nine. They go with the option. Quarterback keeps it himself. And look, we've seen this guy on tape, guys, break these tackles and take it the distance. This offense should keep dialing up these option plays. Don't let that short gain by the QB prevent you from running this scheme in your playbook. Wants to throw on second down. The short hands, it's Burks. He's there to make the stop, but the damage has been done as they pick up the first down on the throw and catch. It's a really nice throw. It's so impressive watching this Oklahoma passing attack. Now, you think back to Bob Stoops taking over as head coach in 1999 and bringing with him the air raid offense, a style of passing attack that Still wasn't very prevalent in college football at the time, but since then, they've always had good quarterback play. And guys that could play up tempo, make good decisions. This dude right here, he fits in perfectly with what they're trying to do throwing the ball in Norman, Oklahoma. Solid pickup of four on first down. It's second and six. Trying play action. They're trying to get to it. And he was hit just as he was releasing the pass, and it falls to the ground incomplete. Quarterbacks talk about it all the time. They love the clean pocket where they can step up and throw the football. That is not what they had. Nice job by the defense. Beating the offensive line, disrupting the timing, and getting a nice clean hit on the quarterback. On third and long, try to convert through the air. Quarterback on the move, still looking. Trying to buy a little time, and he cannot, but he does get it back closer to the line of scrimmage. And that's a great job by this defense. You don't care about yards anymore. Yards are arbitrary. Let them drive down the field, so be it. You want to keep touchdowns off the board, and they might have just done that with a sack right there. And they're going to head out to line up for a field goal. And the holder will place it down on the left hash. A 47-yard try coming. Splits the uprights right down the middle. And after the three-spot guys were all tied up. We're all square as he's set to kick it away.
He'll bring it out. It's golden. That gamble did not pay off as they bring him down at the 12-yard line. So now the Longhorns take over and they'll send out the offense. Finds a little bit of space. He'll get three out to the 15. Got three on first down. It's second and seven. Back to pass. It's Ewers. Quick strike complete. They make the stop, but the sweet throwing catch is plenty to give him a first down. Well, this tight end, he's got size and he's got some athleticism. And he's very difficult to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Defense is going to have their hands full with him today. They'll snap it from the 25 here on first down. Use the play fake. Now to throw. Gets it out fast. You'll take four yards on first down every time, second and six. These guys are called matchup guys. They're not the biggest guys on the field, but they're going to win. Short, and they're going to catch the ball, and they're going to make yards after the catch. You can tell those are the type of guys in college football that are starting to get maximized and used a lot more than they were in the past. He's going to pass on second down. Snag in the middle. It's Bolden. And he gets it up to the 36. It'll be a first down. That quarterback has a hose. That dude could throw it to the car wash and not get away. Great job of putting that ball on a line to his wide receiver. The Longhorns are moving quickly down the field. Running to the left. Makes the stop at the 49, but not before he gets in plus territory, gets 15 and a first down. Well, with the weapons this offense has, you knew it was just a matter of time in the run game before someone was going to break a long one. They'd just been running into a wall that just couldn't seem to find their creases and get enough movement up front, but they finally got it there, picking up the first. Let's see what happens next. They're going to go right back to him on first down. And he finds some solid space, makes a nice game before the defense is able to stop him. You want to talk about making it easy for an offensive coordinator. You pick up a bunch of yards on first down, make that second down really, really manageable. That's a great job by the offense. Eight-yard pickup on first down leaves them with second and short. Fast motion from the offense. Looking for a man. It's Ewers. Not able to hook up the air incomplete. Couldn't pick it up on second down. Now they need a couple on third down. To the ground to try to move the chains. Putting together a real scoring threat here as they pick up the first down at the 36. Yeah, you start day one of training camp running your base runs. You need a few yards, you run these plays. You need a first down, you run these plays. You rep them over and over and over again. They're not sexy, they're not pretty, but in the end, they're effective and they get you that new set of downs when you need them. Let's it fly deep downfield. Ball into the end zone and it's intercepted. Most defenses are lucky if you have one good covering corner. Fewer are lucky if you have two. They've got three DBs, three corners that can play at the same time in their nickel package that they feel can go mano y mano with anyone in the country. You saw it on that last play coming away with it. So Oklahoma has it again, and here comes the offense. From the gun, running back gets to give. Into the pile, maybe got one. He stopped at the 21. You definitely want to commit to the run game. You, you want to establish the run game. You want the defense to honor it. But if it doesn't work a little later down the road, you might think about airing that puppy out. And the Sooners come to the line in the hurry up.
They'll run it on the counter. Keeps it moving for a three-yard gain to the 24. The offense in hurry-up mode. Dropping back, it's Arnold. Wide open downfield. And they don't drag him down until he gets all the way to the 46-yard line. How nice is it as a quarterback that you don't have to throw post routes to get great stats? No, I can just throw it quickly to one of the fastest players in the entire nation and let him burn this defense. The Sooners will snap it on first and 10. He'll pull it on the read. And a nice, solid pickup there before the defense wrestles him to the ground. You know, as a quarterback, when you're doing this zone read play, you got to read that defensive end. If he crashes down hard inside to take the running back away, right away you know now you're keeping the football. Nice job by the quarterback. Entertaining first quarter, and we are all locked up after one as we take a quick look at some stats. We've got a good one going here and looking forward to keep those vibes rolling here in the second. On second down, just keeps firing. Buys a little time. Going to try to get it himself. He's brought down, but not before they pick up the big first down. I just love this guy's instincts, right? When things aren't open right away, he never panics. He just understands the situation where he is on the field, and he's so confident in his own natural ability that he has the ability to run, go get the first down, keep this drive rolling. From the shotgun, the inside give. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. On the ground, it's Ocha. They make the stop of the 19 after a pickup of five. Let him bust for a long one, but now third down becomes very manageable. It's not third in eternity. Now the whole playbook, the short passing game, long passing game, all of it's available. The Sooners want to crank the tempo. On third and short, trying to impose their will and move the chains. And he's knocked down, but not before moving the chains. Third and inches, everybody knows what's coming, but it's so dang hard to stop. And you better get penetration with that defensive line. They didn't do a good enough job. Running back falls forward and does his job. Not the most productive half for this offense so far, but finally starting to get it in gear. First and ten. Pocket starts to collapse. Pressure is on the way, and the pressure has arrived, and down he goes at the 30. This was one of the keys to the game. Could this quarterback, could he extend plays and then make throws and scramble situations? That time, the defense was able to get to him and bring him down for a huge loss. The first down sack pushes the ball back for this long second down. Out of the gun, the inside handoff, looking for a crease. And a decent gain there before the defense makes the stop. And this offense has gotten off to a good start on third down, but this is a different deal on third and long. Quarterback floating away from pressure. Got to protect the merchandise. Gets down without taking a hit. 
you know, you hear the term nickel so much. Most people stay in nickel most of the time because of all the speed in college football and the running quarterback. And you see why it pays dividends. More speed on the field when the QB does take off to go get him on the ground and force a fourth down. It's good. Easy call for the ref. And with that field goal, they now have the lead. So they're lining up to kick it off after that last drive, put a three spot on the board, and now the defense will try to shut him down. He'll start the return inside his spot. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Here comes the Texas offense. That last drive was promising for a while, but you just can't mess it up at the end with the pick, Jesse. No, you got to be able to finish drives, especially in this game. If you're going to win in David, they've got to be able to eliminate the mental mistakes. Yeah, and I don't think you get conservative or play it safe. You can trust your guy. I think you put the ball right back in his hands and let him do his thing. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. To the air, it's Ewers. Flips it out to the back. And a good job in coverage there as they stop it after just a few. They were able to make the completion, but he had to pick his way for just a little bit. Needed a little more help to spring him for some yardage. Yeah, if you're going to have success when you throw it outside like that, you're going to need some more blocking and better blocking downfield. Give the defense credit, though. They were able to rally and made a tackle. Trying to move the sticks on third down through the air. Good job to toss that ball out of bounds and avoid the loss. It's so nice when you know it's third and long, you know a pass is coming, you worked on it all week, get your feet set at the sticks, understand that quarterback's got to be rushed, get him off of his spot. Nice execution by this defense. And the Longhorns will bring the punt team onto the field. First time we've seen their punt team this afternoon. He gets a block. He'll get it up to about the 44-yard line before they slam the brakes on him. Here come the Sooners ready to go on offense. They've had a couple of productive drives, but they've had to settle for field goals in two of their three previous possessions, Jesse. Yeah, this is an offense that takes a lot of pride in execution, and they feel like they should have scored a touchdown every single drive. So while it's been good, not great, David, just execute a little bit better, and they can put this one in the end zone this time. Yeah, and I think you point that out. We went all the way down the field on two of our first three drives and got field goals. Now, just a little better execution when, you, when that field starts to shrink and it gets a little bit more difficult. Off play action. He puts a lot of air under it down the sideline. And it slips through his fingers incomplete. That would have been a huge game if he could have held on. Man, if you're going to win games, you have got to hit on the home run type plays. And that was a great opportunity right there. The receiver has got to be able to look that football in and make the catch. A chance to sort of put the defense on its heels if you convert a third and long. This one from the 44. That's caught. It's Roberts. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. They flexed out that tight end a little bit, and you know the tight end's always open. Always open. Quarterback's best friend. And this guy's a problem, Reese. He's a matchup problem because he's too big for DBs to cover, and he's too fast for linebackers to cover. He's showing you his athleticism there. Going to make sure he doesn't get a return on this one as the punt bounces out of bounds. And here come the horns. They've got it again on offense. They've been pretty much stifled on offense so far, David. Only able to muster three points in their previous three drives. And you got to find a way to open this up and create some explosive plays. The passing game is obviously the easiest way. Jesse, put more speed on the field. Find those guys down the field. And you know they're frustrated, too, because they felt like there were some matchups they could take advantage of to get some points on the board early in this one. They just haven't been able to connect on those opportunities. But I like David's idea. Maybe move some guys around and see if you can create some better one-on-one -on -one matchups. 
pulls it and fires to the left. They stop him almost immediately. Short gain there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. After the last run, would you just give it to him again on third down? Looking to throw at Ewers. Coming after it. Didn't have anything working and just had to throw it away on third down. The Longhorns will punt this one away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Excellent coverage that time. Didn't give him any room to set up a big return. Guys, we'll get another look at this Oklahoma offense. They'll have another opportunity to extend this lead after punting last time, David. And it's important to put that punt behind you. It's, it's over. Let it go. Get back to what you were doing that built this lead. Yeah, and defense, obviously, they won a few downs uh, that last drive. So we got to put them on their heels here. Maybe mix up a few personnel groupings and try to show them some pictures they haven't seen yet. And the Sooners want to pick up the tempo. Movement here from the tight end. To the ground. He's got it again. Really nice run there. Good, solid pickup, and they'll move the sticks for the first down. And I don't care if I get it by 2, by 20, by 30, by 40. I just, I just want to get the first down, understanding the situation, understanding where the sticks are. Doesn't have to be sexy, but I got to make sure I get to that stick, get to the first down mark. Just inside the red zone. First and 10 from the 19. They're threatening to score, and they'll throw it. Grabbed over the middle. It's Roberts. And a good job of coverage by that defense. Just a short pickup. The modest gain on the completion really shows why you want to run the zone. Make them execute and rally to the ball. 100%. Zone eyes on the quarterback. I see him throw the football, break on it, go make tackles, live to fight another down. They'll put the tight end in motion. From the gun, they'll try the middle. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Man, what a spectacular play by that defensive end to come up with the tackle there. And you see those guys get off the football so fast. Most of these guys are 250 to 275 pounds, but they get off the ball fast, low. And the offensive linemen, they have no chance to stop those guys as quick and as fast as they are. On third down, going up top. It falls incomplete. He was trying to find his man for six. On that third down, they took a shot in the end zone, just couldn't connect. QB and receiver not on the same page, and now it's decision time if you're the head coach on fourth. And here comes the field goal unit. This kicker has already made a couple today. He'll line it up from 34 yards out. It's good. He hit that one right down the middle. So they were able to put up a three spot on that last drive, and now the kickoff team out there as they prepare to put boot to leather. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. And here comes the Texas offense back on the field. They'll go to the ground. He found a hole, got about five. He's down at the 21.
Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. The offense showing motion from the tight end, trying to get a read on the D. The pull and throw off the RPO. And good coverage by the defense, just a short game. And defense, man, it helps you a lot when you can be a linebacker or a corner or some safety, anybody, and you see the QB throw the football. Now I can break on the football right away and limit gains like right here on this play. A third down try for the offense. Looking downfield, it's Ewers. Finds his tight end. They'll move those chains, getting it out to the 29-yard line and trying to get this drive rolling. Love the way he didn't just run to a spot. He found the cushion in the zone and got himself open for the first down. Yeah, and you're taught to find that space. Now, don't run right into a zone defender who's sitting there looking at the quarterback and looking at you. So much creativity with routes now and being able to just have subtle moves one way, come back the other way. Nice job by the tight end finding that hole in the zone. Stopped after a pickup of four. Good run to get it out to the 34. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Pulls and fires complete. Tackled after picking up the first down. The Longhorns are moving quickly down the field. Caught behind the line. It's Golden. And he is going to lose yardage. Nowhere to run as he is forced out of bounds. After losing a couple on that last play, here's second and 12. It'll be a draw. A solid pickup there before the defense is able to make the stop. Draws and screens are a great way to slow down really aggressive pass rushers. It allows the defensive ends and the defensive tackles to run upfield. The offensive linemen kind of push them upfield, go down to the next level, try to sneak in a big play. Back to throw, it's Ewers. Looking for a deep man. He's got it inside the 25. And they explode on that one, and they've got it down to the 22. We asked earlier this week, who's your favorite receiver? And of course, he said the open one. But we know who he really wants to go to on third down. The best one. <laughs> I mean, I think the open one, obviously, the politically correct answer. But you want to find the guy that you got that great chemistry with. You know exactly where he's going to be. You got that bond and that trust. Out of the gun. The running back has it. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, the offensive line had everybody blocked except the defensive end. He was able to sneak into the backfield and get the tackle for loss. Second down here, and maybe they've got time to get one more snap off before the two-minute warning. Now the play fake. Fires deep toward the end zone. And he's got it! Touchdown, Texas! On to attempt the try. And the extra point puts them on top, 10 to 9. They go 83 yards on the drive, and they finish things up with a dart from 24 yards out. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. looking for those open spaces and opportunity. 
And the return man has no place to run, no place to hide, and a place to be tackled. Here comes the Oklahoma offense. Back to throw, it's Arnold. The quick out. Didn't pick up a lot there, moved it forward just a few. QB, excellent location on that throw. Out route against man coverage, you cannot miss. If you throw that behind, that might be a pick six. So nice job by the quarterback with his accuracy. Clock's running, and they'll try to get to the line. Warp speed for second down. He's looking to throw, using the quick game. And just a short, safe pass play. They pick up a few. I love playing man-to-man -man defense, and I love getting up in your kitchen and jamming you at the line of scrimmage, but it's really hard when they start running these crossing routes and drags and ends because now I'm in chase mode, and the QB has a little bit of space a lot of times, and those fast guys can create some separation and get a first down like they did there. Looking to throw on third. Makes a connection. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. When you're a playmaker like this guy is, your coaches are going to dial up plays intended for you, especially on third down. That's what you saw in that last play. There was no question where the quarterback was going with that football. All week long, they decided on the biggest downs of this game, we're going to target our best player, and we're going to make sure that he gets looks. It doesn't matter what the coverage is, and you saw it right there on that play. And that's where quarterbacks, you know, they got to be very assertive. They got to believe what they see and really pull the trigger. But the longer they wait and they get off rhythm or off timing, a lot of times it ends up in incomplete passes. Line getting set on second down. After the incompletion, back to the passing game. Working the middle, it's complete. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. As they come to the line on third and short from the 43, I wonder if they already know they'll go for it if they don't make it here. Got it in the middle. It's Ocha. Oh, there's the ball. And the defense jumps on it. And they get that turnover. The offense really needed some points to dig themselves out of this hole right before the half. What did they do? They turned it over. The worst thing they could do now, they've dug themselves an even bigger hole. So Texas has it again, and here comes the offense. They'll come out on this drive and let it rip. And the quarterback is snowed under. The offense wastes no time getting the timeout call. Man, a lot of coaches talk about starting the drive positive and the first play that can get you going. The QB just kept backing up and going backwards, and that is not the start to the drive they were looking for. Fires to the wideout. Complete downfield. Corralled and brought down by the defense. When these wide receivers work the middle of the field, so much of this is feel. Understanding where the holes are in the zone or understanding how to get leverage on a man. And these wide receivers are dangerous nowadays because they do it so fast and see that so quick and make those plays over the middle. To throw, it's Ewers. He's right on target. Really nice job there by both guys to throw and the catch to work that defense and get the first down. Well, we know this guy is special, and because of that, his quarterback is looking to him on critical down and distances. There on that third down, there was no question. It wouldn't have mattered if he was single covered, double covered, man zone. That's oh, what a spectacular layout and catch! And this junior loves to show off that big arm. Man, I, I love those guys that are willing to put their body on the line. And he does it right here, man. Just lays out. That ball's coming in. You can see it from several yards out, making that play, laying out, keeping the football from touching the turf. Great concentration, great effort by the receiver. We've got a timeout in the waning seconds of the half. Maybe a chance to get off a couple more plays. And here comes the field goal unit. And he's already one for one, so this time he'll try to put one through from 39 yards out. Splits the upright, it's good.
That late in the half field goal always gives you a little boost going to the locker room, and they'll need to finish off these final few seconds and not allow them to answer. And he takes this from inside the five. And good work by the coverage team to get the return man down on the ground. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. And it's been said football is a game of inches. And guess what? Based on the comparison between third down conversion rate today and the average yard per play, how can you argue that? I mean, the low-lying fruit is to look at some of the explosive plays we've seen and panic. But really, this game is going to come down to which team is more efficient when they have the ball and how they play when it matters most. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. The Sooners will try to kick this one deep to get things underway in the second half. Here he comes from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Longhorn sending the offense back onto the field. They go to work in the third quarter with the lead, but they have had a little trouble keeping their quarterback upright. Yeah, and you, you have the lead, you're positive, but the offensive line coach is definitely going to be upset. And the offensive coordinator, listen, I don't want my guy getting touched. He's being productive, but give him some more time here in the second half. I think you can do that, too, offensively, by maybe leaving your tight end in to help block, maybe chipping with running backs to help these tackles out on the edge, because you're right, that pocket has been shaky, and if it continues to be that way in the second half, this could be a much different looking football game. Grab behind the line. It's Bond. They get him down after he makes the catch. After the strong run on second down, third down coming. Do they do it again? Looking to pass. It's Ewers. Gets it out quickly. And he's going to be just short of the first down. It's going to bring up a decision for this coach. I mean, good news here. They get the completion. Bad news, though, not enough to pick up the first down. The target there, he's got to do a better job understanding where the first down marker is. Make sure he gets the right depth on his route. Now, all of a sudden, head coach has a big decision. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He will signal for the fair catch and take it just inside the 35. Now the Oklahoma offense will go back to work. Give to the back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And it's a great play by the defensive end. The most athletic players on the field play defensive end. Yes, you heard me, Jess, Reese, exactly what I said. Great get off, great job getting the backfield, making the play. The Sooners in the hurry up. Leaves it with the back. Not much he could do there. Does pick up two to the 34. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Third and long, and he'll try to throw for it. Using the back as a receiver on the screen. They finally get him stopped, but what a good job by that front wall to set up the screen and create some lanes for their running back. Hey, man, sometimes you get the perfect play call at the perfect time. That time, the defense blitzing. Offensive line allowed everybody to run upfield, and they slip in the running back screen in behind it. There was nobody there to make a tackle, and this offense generates a massive play. Takes the handoff. It's Ocha. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, there's a statement by the defensive line. First down play, expecting run, and they just dominated up front. Beat their one-on-ones and forced a tackle for a loss. After losing a couple on that last play, here's second and 12. From the gun, the running back tries to hit the hole. 
That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. Now facing a third and long. To the air, it's Arnold. Pressure coming. Got rid of it just in time. Defense has been looking so good on this drive so far. They already set up third and long, and now they take all the throws away down the field. Great job in coverage. Great job reading the QB's eyes. So there's nowhere for him to go with it. He's got to throw it away. And the Sooners will line up to punt it away. Bringing it back, it's Bolden. They'll get him down at the 21-yard line. The coverage team able to stop him right there. So now the Longhorns take over, and they'll send out the offense. It's caught downfield. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. Really good job hauling that pass in. You know, I know Texas is a place a lot of people think about great DBs, and they've had a lot of really good running backs, too. I think the receiver position is one, though, that they want to build a legacy around. This guy right here, he's really stepping up in this game today, and he's a guy that Longhorn fans, they need to keep their eyes on for years to come. They'll wrestle him down just short of the first down. I don't even think they're going to bring out the chains to measure this one. Man, when I can run the football like that on first down and create second and inches and, and stay way ahead of the sticks and, and be in a position now where I can throw the football or run, I will have a lot of success on the offensive side of the football. From the gun, the ground game. And the Longhorns pick up the first down. Well, they picked up that first running the football. That's good news for an offensive line that really has been getting pushed around and bullied in this game so far. Let's see what happens moving forward. The Longhorns have it with a first and ten. Power football with the run. And he's able to shed one tackle, but still just a very short game. After picking up a couple at second and eight. Wide out in motion. Now he's looking to throw it. Grabbed in the backfield. It's Bolden. He's brought down, but he went backwards after that completion. Not the way they had it drawn up. Well, give the defense credit on that one because they knew coming into this one that they were going to try to get this receiver the ball in a variety of ways. They were ready for the screen there, and they create a negative play. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. Dropping back, it's Ewers looking to take a shot. Can't make the connection on third down thanks to that tough, hard-nosed pass defense, and now it's fourth down. It's a nice job by the receiver working past the sticks. Looked like it was going to be a first down by the offense, but how about the physical play knocking that ball loose? And the Longhorns decide to punt it away. Fourth time tonight we've seen this guy come on to punt. Maybe one notch of adrenaline too much on the punt there. It hits about a yard deep in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. Stopped at the 25 after a five-yard gain. The Sooners want to move quickly. Caught in the backfield. It's Roberts. And that had all the makings of it. Hard meat windshield, but how about the little corner taking on the big tight end and keeping him from getting the first? They'll try to muscle their way forward on third and short from the 29.
He'll ride his man on the option. That just never had a chance as they controlled the middle of the field and stopped him in the backfield on third down. And great job getting in the backfield, making it very difficult to him to make reads and understand what the heck's going on, bottling them up. That's the biggest thing. When you play a running quarterback, you want to bottle them up. You want to set those edges really, really firm and make him turn back inside where all the big boys are coming and you don't let that speed get to the outside. Here comes the Texas offense. Man, oh man, these offenses just haven't been able to find any room to get things going, David. And to quote, Going up top. Makes the grab inside the 30. They'll finally put the brakes on him at the three. A big throw, catch and run on that one. Ooh, the defense so lucky that was not a touchdown. The offense saw an opportunity to take a chance and take a shot. And they executed that play beautifully. The Longhorns will try to punch it in on first and goal. They're going to run it. And he'll be stopped for no gain, still sitting at the three-yard line. Great team defense on that one play. Everybody doing their job. People winning their one-on-ones. D linemen staying in their gaps. Linebackers and DBs filling. You just can't do it better. Got nothing last time. Now second and goal from the three. Running back goes in motion. On second and goal, they go right back to him. Going right back to the well, and this time he finds water. Gets it into the end zone for the touchdown. Speed kills this offense. They've got multiple guys that can burn you. You can see it doesn't take them long to light up the scoreboard. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point is good, and they have an 11-point lead. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team out there and ready to go. From inside the 10-yard line, he'll bring it back. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. The Sooner offense returns to the field. Fires to the tight end. He's brought down quickly. Minimal gain there, still a bit short of the first down. Nice quick throw there. It's so important for quarterbacks to be able to find a rhythm and to be comfortable and confident. You want to just get the ball out quickly, make it an accurate and easy throw. And you can tell that these two guys, they rep that play in practice all the time, and it's now showing up here on the game. Catch in the middle. It's Burks. Knocked down at the 31 after a game of five. You know, the defense doesn't have an answer for this slot guy right now. They may want to think about bracketing him, having a defender play to the outside and to the inside. Probably some sort of zone coverage where you're trying to get two bodies, forcing the quarterback to have to go somewhere else with the ball. They run the reverse. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. You know, as an offense, oftentimes you try the reverse play because you're trying to take advantage of a defense over pursuing and by a lot of defensive team speed. Didn't work right there. Great discipline by this defense. The Sooners are in the hurry up. Using his legs, it's all chuck. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that got to have that defense you know you can go to in running situations. Your base defense where you say, okay, this is where I'm going to start, and I'm going to stop the run, stuff it up front. My guys play big up front. But if I need to add some blitzes to it later on down the road, I can. A great job in the base defense making a play. On 
On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. And the pass rush is effective, and they tackle him at the 19. And the defensive line, you know, third and long situations, I'm rushing the quarterback. You bring in the nickel, a little bit more speed on the field, and the defensive line gets home and gets the sack on third down. And the Sooners send out the punt unit. They've been busy out there to punt for the fifth time today. Another punt on the way. Got to make sure those hammies and glutes all activated. Don't want any muscle pulls from overuse. And here come the horns. They've got it again on offense. Leaves it with the back. They can rely on this guy to pick up solid yardage when they need it, and he's out to the 43. Solid pickup of four on first down. It's second and six. Right back to him on the ground. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Third and short from the 44, and we might know if they plan to go for it on fourth down by what they call here. Looking downfield, it's Ewers. Right down the middle. He's got it. That'll be enough for the first down as they stop him at the 43-yard line. The defense is about learning the plays. Third down, what do they like to do? How do they do it? So far, the offense having a little bit of success, but the defense now, you got to figure out what they're doing. The Loghorns come to the line with a fresh set of downs. Give to the running back. And they'll bring him down after a short pickup. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Wide receiver now comes in motion. He's back to throw on second down. Unloads to the wide out. Nice defensive play to get a hand in there and knock it away. How about the linebacker breaking on the football, seeing the quarterback, the ball comes out, he moves right to where the ball's going, nice anticipation, and swats the ball to the ground. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. On third and long, he has to throw for it. Fires to the big fella. So surprised. We have not been calling this guy's name more. He's one of the best tight ends in the country, but give the defense credit. They have had an outstanding game plan limiting him so far. That's only his second catch of the game. So this field goal unit has been getting the job done. They've already made a couple here today. Everything will have to be clean from 55 yards away. From 55 yards out, and he's got it. Never a doubt. So after putting three on the board, the kickoff team is out there ready to boot it away. On the run from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Time for this Sooner offense to go back to work. Now we'll get a chance to see if they can answer that last score, trailing by 14, Jesse. Yeah, and at this point of the game, I feel like offensively, you should go back to what's been working for you in this game. Don't be afraid to dial up plays that you've already had success with, running it and throwing it. It's okay to repeat plays down 14 at this point. And I would also say, Palmer, kind of understanding that my defense is not playing great. So I know offensively, I got to put some good possessions together here, make something happen on this side of the football. 
Quarterback on the keeper. Pass the sticks, and he may get more. They get it out to the 36 and on the move after a pickup of 15. And this defense knew coming into the game with this quarterback speed, David, they were going to have to be ready for him to tuck the ball and take off running. But it doesn't matter. You know it, but he's so fast. He just, you don't know about the angles, and you can't tell how fast till you get in the game. And he just takes off and, and makes big plays with his feet. From the gun, give on the inside. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, the linebacker's showing you read and react. He knew exactly where that running play was going, and he beat the football to the line of scrimmage and forced the TFL. Time winding down in the quarter as they come to the line. And talk about spreading the ball around. Everyone getting a chance to show off the hands based on the number of targets we've seen. As we start the fourth quarter, it'll take a pretty sizable comeback to win this one. And now on second down for this offense. Dropping back, it's Arnold. It's complete on the right side. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. I'll tell you, you cannot count this team out because of who's playing quarterback. When this guy's in the game, it's never over. Yeah, they're trailing here in the fourth quarter, but this dude can put up points quickly. The Sooners racing to the line in the hurry up. It's reverse. That play just never had a chance. They knock him down for a loss of five. It's so easy to let your eyes lie to you, to see the ball kind of go the other way. What's my assignment? My assignment is to make sure I contain on the backside. Great job by the defense not getting fooled, playing their assignment, making the play. The play action fake. Excellent coverage and good use of the hands to knock it away. Yeah, and a really good job by the defender understanding the ball's coming. I got to break on it and go and not try to intercept it and make a bad play. He swats it down to make sure that's an incompletion. They'll come to the line at the 42, facing a third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a chunk play. Lofts one high and deep. Can't make the play on the interception, and man, they were looking for their first pick of the game. Instead, it'll be fourth down. The Sooners line up to punt it away. They're up to a half dozen kicks today. Cover guys do their job, and they get him stopped at the 22-yard line. And here comes the Texas offense back on the field. They'll leave it with him. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. That's such a nice start to this drive, too, because you've got the lead late, and you want to run the football. You want to be physically dominant. Defense knows you're going to do it, and still, on the very first play of the drive, you're able to rip off a long run like that. Great vision there and a nice job up front with the surge by the O-line. They move the tight end all over. They'll ride the running back and leave it with him. Tackled there by the defense. Well, the defense may have been caught off guard a little bit on that play. It was second and long. They weren't expecting the run. So now we've got third and manageable, and they've got to be wondering to themselves, is this offense going to try to run the ball again here? Here they come, trying to convert a third and short from the 28. Wide receiver shows motion. Unloads quickly. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. Well, I tell you, man, this guy's been putting on a show all game long. We've seen his decision-making. We've seen his athleticism. Because of him, they've got this huge lead in the fourth quarter. So why stop throwing it? Just keep it going when the going's good. And the Longhorns getting set on first and ten. Use the play fake. Now to throw. A strike downfield. Nothing but green grass down the middle. 
He'll be brought down at the three-yard line. An explosive play in the passing game has him on the doorstep. Defense just hasn't had an answer for this guy. He has been on point. This is about as good as I've seen him play at the quarterback position. And here in the fourth quarter with a big lead, he's still taking shots. The Longhorns are marching down the field. The give. He's got it down to the one-yard line right on the doorstep of Pater. Second and goal for this offense. Running play to the left, looking for the end zone here. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. And that's a great stop by this defense. Second down and goal, getting the lost yardage play, now putting your defense in a better position for third down. A touchdown here on third and goal really ratchets up the game pressure. Looking to throw, it's Ewers. Let's it go to the end zone. And it's caught! Touchdown, Longhorn! They've extended this lead, guys, but sometimes in a rivalry game, you get down and you fight back that much harder. Man, you've seen crazy comebacks and crazy swings of momentum in rivalry games. You just need that first thing to break your way, Paul. And I think it really comes down to their key playmakers, David. They can come back. These guys need to take ownership. Now's the time. In this type of game, they have got to step up and start making plays. Lining up for the PAT. And the extra point splits the uprights, and they're up a full three touchdowns. A 21-point cushion in the fourth. The kickoff team out there set to boot it away. Let's see if he can make a play on the return. Pulled down at the 18, and the decision to bring it out of the end zone was not a good one. Here comes the Sooner offense back onto the field. Their drive chart is starting to look a little monotonous. Punt, 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 David. And their defense is starting to get a little frustrated, too. They just keep putting me back on the field, possession after possession. Jesse, this offense needs to get their heads out of there, you know what. The punter's on the sideline with the oxygen mask right now. He's been playing so much. He's not used to this. This offense, they just got to stay on the field. They've got to put a drive together and get some balance going, running and throwing the ball. They're setting up the screen. They make the stop, trying to pick up just a little bit at a time to get to that first down marker. Well, a nice gainer on that running back screen. Now, how about the offensive line getting downfield and getting blocks to really help out the back, find some space to go to work? And the Sooners headed quickly to the line. To the air, it's Arnold. Quickly complete. He's brought down, but there's a flag on the field. Let's see what the call is. They say no thanks to that pass interference penalty, and they'll take the results of the play. They'll throw it on first down. He'll off one deep down the left side. And it falls incomplete, but that could have been disastrous. A defender was right there. And it's just been that kind of day for this quarterback and this offense, guys. They have never been able to get into a rhythm throwing the football. Timing's been off. Accuracy hasn't been great. We've seen some drops. Just not in sync. And that's why they find themselves trailing by a lot right here late in the game. Trying to get to it. And that's just a flat misfire. Not even close to his receiver. Well, the defense really stepped up in this game. They knew they had to slow down this passing attack. They knew they had some matchups. They were going to have to win one-on-one. -on -one. They've been able to do that, and as a result, 
They haven't allowed 200 passing yards in this game. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. Safe completion on the screen. Not a whole lot of room there on that screen pass as it just never developed. A really good job by the defense, understanding third down, the situation in the game. I play a little bit deeper, take away the sticks, react to shorter. I got to go get him on the ground now. Nice job making the tackle, but playing the down and distance first and now forcing a fourth down. Feeling some heat. Got his man quickly. And they finally get him to the ground. An easy conversion for this offense. Defense not exactly the perfect fourth down call there. The offense has struggled. They're not going to win this game. But trust me, this coaching staff is still trying to find things to build off of for next week. And after an explosive play like that, maybe they can generate just a little bit of momentum and gain a little bit of confidence that they can keep coaching up heading into their next game. Not a whole lot of room there. Three yards, maybe. Second and seven. Well, they try to go quarterback design run on that play, but the defense just not buying it. Nice job, everybody playing downhill and making a tackle close to the line of scrimmage. They ran it on first down, now on second. He'll do it himself. Got enough for the first. They get him on the ground after he gets enough to move the sticks. How nice is it to have a guy that can say, I'm just going to go get the first down. Like, I know I have options. I can do X, Y, and Z, but I'm just going to let me run it, go get the first down, and give myself an extra set of downs. The Sooners moving quickly to the line. Off the play fake on first down to throw. He caught it! Let's go. We got some life. We, we made a big play. Something to build off of. We need a lot of points, and we need them quickly. Time's running out. We're trailing big in this ballgame. The Sooners have it in scoring position on first and goal. Back to pass. It's Arnold. He's got it. Crisp execution in the passing game, and they've got it down to the three. I'll tell you, man, I love quarterbacks that have arm talent, but that can throw it accurately at the same time, and you saw all of it on that in run. They've got it down to the three. Now it's second and goal. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. All right, well, they've been trying to run the football to get it in here. You're right on the doorstep. I like maybe setting up a jumbo formation, maybe going play action, see if you can sneak a guy out in the flat for the score. They desperately need to get the score here on third and goal to have any kind of wild chance. Trying to power it in. Just hammer it with this running back again, and he noses his way into the end zone. Up and over, Yama will be there into the end zone. And, and you don't want to leave your feet very often in football, but this is one of those areas where you do. In the end zone, near the goal line, you smell it. A lot of bodies in front of you. Just get up, get over top of them, get that touchdown. Getting set for the point after. Right down the boulevard. Precise, relentless execution on that 13-play scoring drive. And finish the deal with the short touchdown run from the two. They've got it down to a two-touchdown deficit, trailing by 14 and about to kick it away. On the move from inside is five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. So Texas has it again, and here comes the offense. Now they need to put something together to answer that last score. There's a lot of pressure, too, on this offense to have to execute at a high level. They've got to score points, David, but they can't go too fast because their defense right now is tied. And I think that's the difficulty being a play call. Like, I have to balance all of those things. My defense is a little bit tired. I can't put on the field, but i got to be aggressive because this is a back-and-forth type game. So a lot to process and think about. They'll give it to the back. 
into the pile. Maybe got one. He stopped at the 21. A third and long coming up here. Back to throw. It's Ewers. Setting up the screen. Got room at the 35. He gets it past the first down marker and a really nice job to set up that screen and move the sticks. He's been so locked in, it seems like any pass called is a guaranteed chunk play. Yeah, and in winning late like this in the ball game, keep trusting him, keep spinning. You know why? Because stats matter late in the game. You want some postseason awards? Keep chucking it. Keep getting those stats. From the gun, the give, looking for room. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Man, oh man, the ball carrier was just shut down. And I tell you what, they need some push up front too, right? They got to move those defensive linemen out of the way. At least create a hole so your running back has a chance. Not there. He didn't have it. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. From the shotgun, they'll run it. And a good, solid pickup before the defense cuts him down. The line to gain here is the 43-yard line, and it's third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Grabbed in the middle. It's Bolden. And they stop him just short of the stick. It'll bring up a decision on fourth down. Yeah, he was able to make one guy miss, but he had to make two in order to pick up that first down. It was a nice individual effort, just not enough. And the Longhorns will try to pin them back with the punt. They may have to pay him overtime. He's punting for the fifth time today. He'll get away another punt. He's been really active today, and no doubt he's going to earn his varsity ladder. So Oklahoma has it again, and here comes the offense. Man, what a drive last time for the touchdown. That passing attack was lethal, David. Yeah, and you know, you hear all these stupid commentators like me and Jesse talking about create balance, you know, run and pass. No, when you throw that good, spin the ball around. So the defense has to find a way to affect the quarterback on this drive because last drive, he had way too much time to throw. That first down was rather unproductive. Let's see what they've got on second down from the 16. Wants to throw. It's Arnold. Just a short pass to the tight end. And they're able to get him on the ground. This defense better not blink. I know they've got a lead here in the fourth quarter, but just look at who they're going against. This quarterback is one of the best in the nation. They cannot rest on their laurels. Someone's going to have to make a play. And the Sooners will hustle to the line. They'll throw on third and short. And that pass picked off. He'll try to take it back. And they'll close in on him after a good return on the interception. The number one objective for a defense is to make the offense one-dimensional. Well, when they're trailing by this much late in the game, they're one-dimensional. They have to pass the football. We can bring more speed on the field. You see it. We know you're throwing the football. Nice break on the football. Nice interception. This one's almost over. The Longhorn sending the offense back onto the field. After punting the last time they had it, they ought to be set up for a much better result with this drive. This offense better be licking their chops. You're not going to start with better field possession than this all game day. You ain't lying. Forget about the last possession and what we did. You're already in scoring position. Take care of that football. Make sure you get some points. On first and ten, trying to strike from the 15. They'll run it to keep the clock moving. Able to get one down to the 15. And that's really nice offensively because you're in the red zone. You do have an opportunity to add to your lead here, but you're staying in bounds. I think the clock right now is the most important thing. How can we keep this thing ticking away? By going down in bounds, you're doing exactly that.
to the air. It's Ewers. Flips it out in the flat. And he'll step out of bounds after a very productive play. Not a lot of ground to cover and not much to defend. A big third down in the red zone. Looking to throw for it. He caught it! And he's into the end zone! Touchdown, Texas! And Bebo's really starting to snarl right now, and he'd love to rub the Sooner Schooner's face right in it, David. Yeah, they got it cooking. The Longhorns are looking good. In this rivalry game, you got half the crowd in this burnt orange, Jesse, that is going bananas right now. Boomer Sooner's got the weapons, though, guys, on offense. You've got the horses on the outside to turn this thing into a track meet. I know you're down here, but you can change this game. It just takes one play. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point splits the uprights, and they're up a full three touchdowns. A 21-point cushion in the fourth. They're just about ready to kick it away. He'll start the return inside his five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. He's going to pass. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we see miracles in college football all of the time, and they could use one here. Four wide out set, two on either side on second and ten. Looking to throw, it's Arnold. They're bringing heat. Well, great job there by the defense because they weren't able to get him sacked right away, but you saw the coverage in the back end. Nowhere for the quarterback to throw the football. Didn't get the sack, obviously. You don't get the negative play, but you also don't give up a big one. You're feeling pretty good about where you are right now in this drive. Clock is still running, and they have to get everybody lined up. On third down, he'll try to pick it up through the air. Throws to the wideout. And they can't make the play on third down. After that incompletion, fourth and long now on your own side of the field, you're trailing in the fourth quarter. What's your go-to play call here in the passing game? Where is the matchup that you trust in to come up with a big one to give yourself a chance to stay alive and win this game? down by multiple possessions they can't come up empty on this drive in the fourth quarter they'll go for it on fourth down he's got it downfield for a huge game he's into the open down the middle touchdown sooner and once he found daylight it was katie bar the door baby nice job by the offense going down the field putting points on the board but you're still down a couple possessions still need some good things to happen you need your kicker to go over there and get warmed up we need an onside we need to score some points we need a lot of things to go right to win this football game Ready to try the point after. Bangs it through for an extra point. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they finish with a huge play in the passing game, covering 75 yards to house it. They're definitely up against it. Time running out, down two possessions. They'll try the onside kick. Cool as a cucumber as the hands team makes a sure catch. So now the Longhorns take over and they'll send out the offense. They're in command of this game. Now let's see if they try to rub a little salt in the wound or happy with getting the W. Yeah, and listen, this, this makes the post-game handshake fun sometimes. If you do choose to rub a little salt in it and keep chucking and keep scoring, I'm here for it, Jesse. Like, your job is to score points. It's my job to stop it. Keep the foot to the accelerator. Keep trying to play ball. 
I agree a thousand percent. That's like Steve Spurrier back in the day when I was playing for the Gators. You go and play for him because you want the opportunity to, to throw the ball. So when you get in the game late, you're not handing it off. We were beating Central Michigan by 80-something points. He was still letting us throw the football. It's the defense's job to stop you. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. On third down, he drops the throw. Always a welcome play for the defense as they get a sack at the 47. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way, making sure there's no return on that one as the punt sails out of bounds. The offense comes out needing a score here, down one possession. It's complete. He's got enough for the first down. They'll spot it at the 37. And I think this receiver's forte is his route running. He's a guy that can line up all over the field, but it's not just catching post routes and goes. This guy can run shallows. He can run slants. He can run the option routes and find soft spots in the defense. This guy really has all the routes in his toolbox. They'll line up for a second down play. Looking for a man. It's Arnold. Getting some heat. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. Listen, I love when my quarterback gets outside the pocket. I got an opportunity to make a huge play. But when it's not there, now I want him to make the simple play. Throw it away. Don't take the sack. Don't take the loss of yards plays. The Sooners come to the line in the hurry up. Quickly gets everyone set. They spike it to stop the clock. And after this play, the cake will be baked. On fourth down, they'll pass for it. He's taking a deep shot. They fought to the bitter end, and the final incompletion puts a wrap on it. This game always brings out the best in both teams, but today, Jesse, Texas' best was a little better. And this is a win for them that's going to help their recruiting. Coaches are going to get paid for But most importantly, David, Texas gets bragging rights for another whole year. A whole year of bragging. And a whole year of telling OU fans, you're not as good as us. You can throw up the hook'em horns. You can do it with pride. A lot on the line every year in the Red River rivalry. It may not be a crown, but it's a hat and it is golden. In this latest edition of the Red River Rivalry, it goes to Texas. For David Pollock and Jesse Palmer, I'm Reese Davis. Until next time, that'll do it for this edition of EA.